Hi everyone, welcome back to the next diecast. In today's video, I'll be showing you and reviewing the 2018 scale Audi TT Roadster made by Ravel. I got this model from eBay for around $37 in total, including shipping. I thought that was a pretty good deal considering that this model has been discontinued for quite some time. Ravel first released the model around 1999, which is when the actual car came out, both the coupe and the roadster version. And Ravel also made the coupe version of the model as well. In terms of the coupe, you can get it in yellow, black, blue, or silver. And the roadster came in either white with a red interior, black with a gray interior, or this really nice kind of deep dark green with this grayish green interior. I thought the green just looked really good on the model and on the real Audi TT Roadster, so that's why I decided to go with the dark um, green version. And this does seem to be the most common color, at least as far as the Ravel TT Roadster model goes. And it seems like the, the Roadster is a little bit more common than the Coupe in terms of at least um, the listings on eBay seem to go. But you can expect to pay usually between $20 and $45 or even $50 for this particular model, depending on which version you're getting and, and which color you're getting. And of course, whether or not it's brand new in the original box and just based off the condition of the model in general. Of course, in terms of first generation Audi TT models in 118 scale, um, the only other budget manufacturer of this particular car would be Maisto. Maisto actually did make a model of the first generation TT Roadster in several colors throughout the 2000s and into the 2010s. So that would actually be, I guess, the biggest comparison and competitor to the Ravel um, TT Roadster and Coupe models. So throughout the video, I will show you all the different details of the, this model and compare it with what I know in terms of how the Maisto model is detailed. And then we'll see if this model, um, I guess, holds up to the standards of other budget 118 scale model cars in today's market. The Audi TT was originally created as a concept vehicle in 1995 by Freeman Thomas, and it was popular enough that Audi would later release it as a production model in late 1998 for the Coupe and then in summer 1999 for the Roadster. And the first generation model would be produced from 1998 until 2006. And the TT would see two more generations until it was discontinued in 2023. And to me, the first generation seems to be the most iconic um, of the three different generations of the TT. And it's actually my favorite of the three different generations as well. So I'm definitely glad that I found this model made by Ravel to represent the first generation TT in my collection. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the details of the model. We'll start up here at the front. I think Ravel really did a good job capturing the overall look and shape of this car. Um, the car is quite an I iconic car from the history of the Audi brand, and certainly now I think it's still popular. But again, Ravel I think did capture the look of the TT quite well with their 118 scale uh, model here. In the front, you will see that Ravel did a good job with the overall look and shape of these headlights here. There are actually no pegs to be seen holding the lenses in place. Um, which is a cool touch. A lot of these budget brands in the late 1990s and the early 2000s were including kind of these obvious glue pegs to hold the lenses of their headlights and taillights in place. We don't really see that on this Ravel TT, which is very nice to see. They also captured the shape of the light bulbs quite well. They're done in separately cast plastic chrome pieces. And then you have these indicator lights done kind of in just in orange colored paint, but they do look um, decently done, I would say. They also did a great job with the grills of the model. I will say that the Maisto version does have perforated grills for the lower grills, so in a sense that model is slightly better in terms of the front end detail. Ravel, I think, nonetheless did a great job with all the different plastic um, grill components on here. You do have the slatted grill in the center here as well. I think on the Maisto version that's also perforated, but on this Ravel version you don't see that. Although that being said, Ravel did a good job with this um, badge in the center here. It looks like a separately cast plastic piece, and I think it is actually a separately cast um, plastic piece. But it really does pop out, and the rings are kind of a nice like three-dimensional look. And the chrome, of course, does look quite good on the model as well. The pink quality, I would say, is very well done for a model of this uh, vintage. 
Um, it is kind of a metallic dark green finish, and this paint color was available on the real life of car. Um, it was offered for the first few model years, and I believe it was only available on the Roadster, but it really does look um, great. I actually didn't know that they made this car in dark green until I saw the Revell model. And then once I found that out, I looked up pictures of the real car, and sure enough, they did make it available in this dark green. But the paint finish on the model here is nice and smooth throughout. There's a couple rough patches like here and there, but you really can't see it. I think just because the color is so deep, rich, and dark that any of the imperfections on the model, if there are any, which on mine there really are not too many to speak of, they're kind of hidden, I would say, based off the dark paint. So Revell, I think, did an excellent job with the paint on this particular model. These side mirrors and windshield are made from plastic, so just be careful when you're picking up the model and uh, storing it. But that being said, they are all very sturdy pieces. And I think the paint on them matches quite well with the metal portions of the car, which is nice to see. They also did a great job with the wipers as well. They're molded and separately cast um, plastic pieces, which is a nice touch. And in terms of the Maisto model, I'm not sure if the windshield is made out of metal or plastic, but they both look um, pretty similar in terms of uh, pictures. Take a look next at the wheels. Rebel, I think, did a great job with these wheels. You can see that they're done in kind of the silver aluminum look, and then you have the chrome um, center caps, which look very cool. They really do stand out, kind of paired up with the matte silver finish of the wheels, and Rebel also did branded tires on the model as well. These are the Michelin branded tires that you would see on the real uh, car. Now, in terms of the Maisto wheels, they did actually a different look in terms of the rim. I think there's a couple less spokes on their wheels, and you may or may not see branded tires on those. I think I prefer the wheels on the Revell model over the wheels on the Maisto version, but Revell did a great job, I think, with these wheels for sure. Of course, you do have full steering on the model, which is very tight. And the Maisto version does have suspension, but the Revell version does not. But I don't really think that's a big deal. The Revell version, I think, does have the more sturdy um, steering system, which is nice to say. Taking a look at the back of the model, you have the Audi badge in kind of a matte silver finish, and then you have the TT badge on the lower left portion of the rear back here. Um, they didn't do separately cast plastic pieces for these badges, but they do look good nonetheless. They're not, you know, smeared over or anything, and I think they are the right proportion that you would see if this were the real uh, vehicle. You also have nicely done taillights as well, and they even include the third brake light as a separately cast on plastic piece. On these taillights, Revell did a good job with those as well. I think the plastic is nice and flush with the metal portions of the body. And then you have some nicely molded in um, bulbs inside the taillights as well. The Maisto taillights look fairly um, similar. And then you do have the exhaust pipe down here as well, which is done in kind of a, a matte finished silver plastic. Um, something kind of interesting is that on the real life um, first generation TT, you'll see either single exhaust versions or dual exhaust versions. And that was based off the options that you had and the trim of the model. This Revell TT is actually based off a lower trim and you can tell by the single exhaust and the interior as well, which is not two-tone, and you don't have the baseball stitching on the seats. So that's kind of neat, I guess, that Revell went for modeling a, a lower trim version of this car. I think the Maisto version is based off a higher trim model. And Revell did a good job of molding in this rear silver gas cap as well. It's not a separately cast plastic piece. It's actually kind of ingrained into the metalwork, but it does look good nonetheless. In terms of the working features on the model, you may have noticed that this does have the removable convertible top. This does score points over the Maisto version just for that feature, because you do have that convertible top that comes with the model. And the top is nicely done. It does have a nice um, texture to it. Although I will say that it is peeling a slight bit, which is kind of odd. You can see back here on this portion, there's kind of these cracks going on. And when you hold it up in the light, you can see that there's some cracking in terms of the paint work. It's not going to flake off or anything, but just be very careful when you're touching it. I don't know if it's due to like the sun being on it or something when it was stored by the previous person who had the model. I'm not really sure on that, but from a distance, you can't see all those little creases and cracks in it. But the texture does look like a real convertible top, aside from those weird little cracks, I guess. <laughs> but the fact that Revell in included this top, I think, is a very cool touch. And the top is held on by multiple clips, as you can see here on the underside. And then it does clip up in several places. Like you have two clips here, 
one back here, and then you have several on the windshield as well. So once I get through with showing the interior details, I'll show you how the top um, is installed on, on the model. But that's one of the working features, I guess, if you can call it that. <laughs> But in terms of the opening features of the model, we do, of course, have the opening trunk back here, which opens up like so. Not too much to really see in there. Um, Ravel does a decent job with the overall look, shape, and texture of the inside of the trunk. It does go back a slight bit, and if this were the real car, that's where you would see the folded back top. The inside of the trunk um, does look well done for a budget-grade model. But not really a whole lot to see in there aside from that. You also have this wind deflector that raises up and down, although it doesn't stay up that well. If you saw the unboxing video I did, you saw that I was trying to get it to stay up and it just wasn't staying up. But, oh, there we go. Let's see if I can move the car a little bit. So here is the wind deflector when it is raised up. That is a really um, cool touch when it does work, as you can see right here, if you have the model up on the shelf and have that part raised. So cool touch for sure. Just wish it worked a little bit better. Of course, you do have the opening hood on the model as well. The hood's a bit hard to get open. It's kind of stiff. And when you close, it almost feels like you're like breaking the hinges, but you're not. It just is a very tight um, opening fixture. So we'll try to get this open here. There we go. The engine detail of the model, I would say, is quite well done for a budget model. You can see it does have the Audi badge on the main block. The first generation TT did have the inline four uh, motor in it. And Ravel, I think, did a good job of capturing the engine in their model here. The mice, though, I think maybe has a slight bit more detail in terms of just the overall look and shape of the different um, components in the engine. But the Ravel version, I think, is decently done as well. You can see the main block is kind of molded in a separately cast plastic piece done in kind of this gloss black finish. And then you have kind of the silver finish down here. And you can see all the way down to the bottom of the car as well, which is a nice touch. And all the green portions you see in here are actually made out of metal, which is a very cool touch. And once again, you have the Audi and the 5V Turbo inscription on here, which you would see on the real uh, car. So cool touch. And then, of course, you have the opening doors on the model as well. They open up quite wide on spring-loaded hinges, which is a nice touch. And Ravel went for kind of the monotone, I guess we'll say, interior scheme where it's kind of like a grayish color, and you could get this interior color with the green car in real life. Although Audi did offer a version where the seats, or I think some of the um, other parts of the interior could be ordered in green to match the exterior of the car. But at least as far as the Rebel um, version goes, they did go with the all gray look for the interior. But in terms of the interior detail, Rebel I think did a good job as far as a budget um, model goes. Some of the fine detailing that you see on the Maisto version is definitely not present on the Ravel version. Like the Maisto, I think, does have some more detail in terms of the different buttons that you see in the center stack, whereas on the Ravel version, they're on there, but they're not really um, colored in. They do color in the red button for the hazards, um, which you would see on the real vehicle. And they do color in the climate controls as black dials, which you would also see on the real car. But aside from that, it's all kind of done in just a single shade of gray. Although that being said, they do a nice kind of silver trim around the vents, which is what you would see on the real vehicle. And they also did a great job with the look and shape of the steering wheel as well. Then as far as the door panel details go, they're decently detailed. There really is not a whole lot to see on them. Ravel did do the netting that you would see for like the storage pockets that you would see on the real um, door panels. And then you do have the nice overall look and shape of the door panels as well. They have kind of a glossy plastic finish. Not really sure if that would be proper to the real vehicle. Might have been kind of a more um, rougher texture of plastic for the door panels. But the door panels are a different type of plastic on the model than the dashboard is. The dashboard is kind of a more rough texture of plastic, whereas the door panels have a more smooth texture of plastic. So that, that's just something to make a note of right there. And Ravel did a great job with the pedals as well. They're done in separately cast plastic pieces and they have the nice um, silver look to them with the black um, pads on them, which is what you would see for the real pedals. So they really did pay attention to the details in that sense, which is very cool to, to say. As far as the seats go, Ravel did a good job of capturing the overall look and shape of those. They have a nice um, texture to them and they do look um, quite well done. You don't get um, seat belts, however. The Maestro version does have the seat belts. I wish Ravel included plastic seat belts on their model. 
but at least they do a good job um, with the interior in general. I think the Maisto version is a slight bit more detailed as far as the interiors go, but the Ravel version does um, look good, I think, for a budget grade model. And then of course you do have the roll bars up here too, I forgot to mention that. In terms of putting on the convertible top, you just have to kind of line it up with the front of the windshield like that. These clips kind of slide into place back here. And then you just have to make sure that the clips line up with the um, rear portion. And then you just kind of push it into place like that. And it does kind of click and then you know that it's in place, I guess. It is a bit hard to um, put on and take off because it's so stiff. But I think that's a good thing because then you know that it's securely on the car when you do put it on the car. And you can actually pick it up briefly. I wouldn't pick it up for a, a long time or frequently by the top like that. that. That's how sturdy it is once it's installed on the car. But don't do that. <laughs> I just wanted to show how, how sturdy the convertible top was once you put it on the model. And it really does look good, I think, both with the top up and the top down. So... I think that's really cool that Ravel does include the convertible top on the model. As far as the undercarriage detail goes, not really a whole lot to see. Ravel does mold the exhaust system in kind of this matte silver plastic, whereas on the Meister version, it's done in chrome. But I think on the Ravel version, the matte silver plastic finish looks better than, than the chrome finish that the Meisto model has. So overall, I think Ravel did a good job with this model of the first generation Audi TT. And I think it does hold up quite well to other lower end models that are made today. Um, I think some more fine details would have been welcome in some areas of the model, like the interior. But I think in general, Ravel really did capture the first generation TT quite well with this model. And if you can find it for a good price, as long as you're paying, I think, below you know, $45, I think you're getting a good deal for the model. And the coupe, I think, pretty much has the same details as the Roadster, except for the coupe, you obviously don't have the convertible top. So if you want to go with the coupe or the Roadster, they're going to be kind of similar, if not the same in terms of details. They just come in some different colors, as I noted in the earlier portion of the video. So yeah, I hope this review was helpful, and feel free to comment down below with your thoughts on the model or on the video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.